Amen. Uh, Amen. Allow me to go straight to the word of God. Uh, our text today is coming from the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 24, verse, six, verse 14 to 27. Allow me just to read verse 14 to 15, and then the rest of us will read as we continue. The Bible says, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Draw away the gods your forefather worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seem undesirable to you, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers, whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river, all the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Let's pray because of the word. Our Lord and our Father, we are so grateful again. The Lord, by your grace, you have enabled us to come again to worship you today. And dear Lord, Father, time has come for us to hear your word. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will use me to divide your word of truth to your people as you had prepared me in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I capture every mind, every concentration. I pray, O oh God, that you're going to speak to each person in a very personal way today. 
That dear Lord Father, even as we hear your word, it will have meaning. And dear Lord Father, we will be careful to respond and to do that which you command us to do today, O God. Holy Spirit of God, may you take over, rise above every power and dominion and principality of darkness that rises itself against your word. And I pray, O God, that you, your Holy Spirit will take charge from this moment to the end in the mighty name of Jesus. And as I stand in this altar, Lord, I pray for your divine covering. I pray for clarity of mind, thought, and speech. The Lord, whatever I will speak will be from you. And when I am through, Lord, may you take the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, so we had uh, read the word of God from the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse uh, 14 to 27. Uh, the last time I stood here, I said that we can break limits by responding by faith and not by fear. And today I want to say that we can break limits in this life by choosing to serve God. Can you tell your neighbor by choosing to serve God? Angalia jirani, mwambie by choosing to serve God. Yeah, we can break limits by choosing to serve God. You know it comes at times in a man's life when it's a defining moment for you to decide, for you to make a choice, for you to make a decision. Who do you want to live for? Who do you want to associate with? Who do you want to believe? Who do you want to demonstrate in your daily life? And in such defining moments, they are very key because they determine, they will determine your, your desire or your devotion or your dedication. They will determine what you will dedicate yourself to. And again, they will also determine not only what you will dedicate yourself to, but they will also determine your destiny. Many choices that we make in this life, they determine who we will be tomorrow. The choice that I made as a young person is the one that has made me to be who I am today. Because there, there was a defining moment, a defining season in my life when I sat down and I made a choice. And where we have read today from the book of Joshua, it is at a point whereby God has been faithful to the children of Israel. He has fought for them. He has provided for them. He has, he has preserved them. I really love uh, what the Bible says when you read from chapter 24, verse 1. It shows how God chose Abraham, who used to worship idol. It was God's initiative to choose Abraham and allow him to be used as a savior for the children of Israel for generations to come. And this was reminding me that if you are saved today, probably when you look at your background, maybe there was no one who was saved. Babe and who makuna kilumeko Sidika in a skika Sidika interpret Ade Kuna to kwa kulko kuna pigwa ile drum ya wakamba usiku watu wana dance mpaka wana shikwa na na evil spirits they take over their life. There are people maybe who are seated here from the time they grew they 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 saw their parents going to the witchcraft. Others even they can attest that in our home we have a shrine. We have seen my parents go and worship and offer sacrifices. But God, but our God, he is a merciful God. Praise the name of the Lord. And when God realized that Abraham was coming from such a background, he decided to choose him that he may serve his purpose. And so here Joshua is reminding the children of Israel, remember that God chose Abraham from idol worship together with his father Terah and he called them that they may that they may follow him and forsake the idol gods when you read uh, again verse 5 it shows how God came to their rescue when they went to Egypt we see God sending Moses to rescue them again when you read uh, verse verse 11 the Lord enabled them to cross the, the Jordan River. Where, uh, verse 8, verse 7, it speaks about how God divided the Red Sea for them. How God defeated their enemies. How God protected them and preserved them 
even when the enemies were pursuing them. And so this was reminding me that God can allow our enemies to pursue us, but they can never overtake us. When we choose to serve God, he will allow them to pursue us. He will allow them to try to hunt us down, but they will never overtake us. When you read verse, uh, verse 13, it says, I gave you a land on which you did not toil, and cities you did not build, and you live in them and eat from vineyards, olives, groves, uh, groves that you did not plant. That is our God. And this is the God that Joshua is reminding the children of Israel. That is the God that protected you. That is the God that provided for you. That is the God that preserved your life. That is the Lord that gave you cities and, and vineyards that you did not plant. That is the God I am speaking about. There are people who are seated here today and they know the small piece I the small piece of land I have, it is only God who has given me. And so as we are seated here, we can identify with these children of Israel. We can reflect back and see the faithfulness of God in our lives throughout the years. Praise the name of the Lord. Has the Lord done anything for you that is worthy to be remembered? Wengine tulianza kutafutu hata wakati tu. Mama zetu walitubeba katika, katika tumbo zao. Mutu wakangalia kasama and you will not survive. This girl will not live. But praise be the name of the Lord who preserved your life. So we are here by grace. And so from where we have read today, verse 14. So this is at a point where the children of Israel are renewing their covenant. They are renewing their commitment to serve the Lord. And when the Lord brought to me the idea of we can break limit by choosing to serve him, he reminded me that service is not just service. There are people today who are serving God but they are still slaves. There are people today who are saying, I am serving God, but they are not serving God, they are serving their own selfish interest. And therefore, for us to be able to break limits through our services to God, number one I propose to us is that our service must align with God's standards. Praise the name of the Lord. Our services, the way we offer our services to God, must align with God's standards. Why am I saying align with God's standards? Everywhere where we work or where we go, there are usually principles that guide people how to live or how to work there. And therefore, it is not different when we come to the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of darkness, people are ordered how to work. They are given a standard on how to practice whatever they are practicing. Ukienda kwa mganga leo, kuna maali unaezanda uambiwe, ingia na usiangalie nyuma. Yani ukisha ingia, ukitoka, usiangalie nyuma. That is the standard of that kingdom. There is a place when you go today, because you are looking for employment, unambiwa, ashika ika small katri, eka hapo kwa wale, tutaku unatembea na kila wakati, usiwa itoa. That is the standard of that kingdom. And you must obey it. Mtumuda alienda kwa mganga mahali na wakaambiwa, make sure, audapanda gari. Now make sure hii mti ni makupatia itanyeshewa baru is God. Akatembea, akatembea, akachoka. Na mfua ikaanza kunyesha. Na masharti ilikuwa usipande gari na isinyeshewe. Alishikwa na wazimu kwa barabara. There is a standard in every kingdom. And therefore we as believers, God has called us to serve. And for us to serve and our services to bring transformation, our services to touch lives of people, we must serve according to God's standards. Our services must align with the standards of God. God does not call us to serve him uh, in, a, in a casual way. But he gives us a standard on how we need to serve him. And there are many people, when you read verse 14, Joshua told them, after you remember what God has done for you, now, and I say, this, this month, this being the last day, 
of uh, this being the last Sunday of this month, I say now and I see you more. It is a time to shift and stop serving God in a casual way and start serving God according to his standards. Joshua told them, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Not just service, but serve him with all faithfulness. We see Saul being elected as a king. Whether it was the will of men plus the will of God. But we see Saul serving according to his standard. He was told wait until Samuel come and do the sacrifice. But he could not wait. He decided to serve himself. His personal interest. And he went ahead and sacrificed. No sooner had he sacrificed than the prophet of God appeared. And he asked him, what have you done? And he told him, God desire obedience more than sacrifice. We see the servant of God, Moses, uh, when you read in the book of uh, Numbers chapter 20. God has told Moses, speak to the rock that it will produce water. But what did Moses do? Moses, he strike the rock. And after a long journey, God called Moses into the mountain. And while they were in the mountain, the two of them, he reminded him, remember I chose you to serve according to my standards. When I sent you to Pharaoh's house, I told Aaron to drop the stick. To serve according to my standard. But I told you to speak to the rock. What did you do? You, you, you strike the rock. Yes, the miracle happened. The water came out. But Moses was told, because you serve the, uh, according to your standards, you will not reach Cana. I am speaking to a person who has been serving the Lord in this church. Maybe you have been saying, I serve in the praise and worship team and I cannot see them. Maybe I serve in the choir. Maybe I serve in the media team. Maybe I serve as a WCC member. Or I serve as an LCC leader in the church. But the biggest question to ask yourself today is am I serving according to God's standard? Or am I serving according to my own standards? I've seen people who serve the Lord according to their standards. And the end results are not good. We see people like Samson the anointed of God. Wamagiliwa mafuta wa mungu. Lakini kwa sababu, after being chosen by God and commissioned to serve God, they started serving their own interests. They started serving their own pleasure. They started serving their own flesh. Instead of serving according to the standards of God. In our giving, I thank the Lord because uh, last week you we were giving for pastor's upkeep and you did a great job. You broke a record. Can we praise God for that? For the first time I heard pastors of this church appreciating the good work that you have done. And yesterday a strategy for our Nairobi area was being dedicated to the Lord. And somebody asked, when God is judging the politician for corruption, do you think the Christian will escape the judgment of God? Why? Because we will not escape because God has given his standards when we come to matters giving. If it is tied, he has said, bring your tithe in the house of the Lord. That in the house of the Lord there will be food. He has said, go to the mountains, cut trees and come and build a sanctuary for me. But even when we are bringing our tithe in this church, are we serving him faithfully? And he has said, bring the tenth. He is very specific. Are we serving him faithfully? When it is time to come for worship, are we devoted to a point that I can say, Lord, even as I am going to that church, I am going there because I want to worship you with a sincere heart. When we are working in our companies, wherever God has positioned us, those are our pulpits. Are we serving him faithfully? Because he is our master. 
And therefore, God calls us today. When you read in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12, Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12, the Bible says that serve God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Deuteronomy 18, 13, the Bible requires us, us to be blameless before the Lord. The Bible requires us to be blameless before the Lord. When you read 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24, the Bible says, Be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider all things he has done for you. Whatever God has positioned you, if you are the usher, if you are an usher in this church, are you serving God faithfully? Joshua did not tell them. And now this is what God say. Serve me. But he told them. This is what God say. Serve the Lord faithfully. I want just to implore all of us today. Whatever service that God will put at our disposal. We should do it not as if we are doing it for pastors. Not as if we are doing it for elders. But we do it for the go for the living God. Praise the name of the Lord. Ikiwa to tam to mikiya mungu. Ame ikiwa whatever we will do, we will do it because of our love for God. Then we will see results. We will see rewards and we will see fruits because we are serving God according to His standards. And Joshua told them, "You need to draw the gods." The gods of your forefathers. Remember I said Abraham used to, to, to worship idols. Where they went in Egypt, they used to worship idols. And he's telling them, you need to, to draw your idols. And this reminded me, when God chose Gideon in the book of Judges, he told Gideon that you need to go and destroy the altars of your forefathers. And Gideon went and destroyed the altar. And when people came in the morning, they asked who destroyed. They were told it is Gideon. And they wanted to stone him. But the father said, if this is our God, if this is, was our God, let this God defend himself. Are there small gods that you're still keeping? And you are saying, I'm still serving the Lord? There are people who have some lessons in their houses. That is an idol. Am I speaking to someone? There are people in their businesses who have a small idol. You need to throw away that. Praise the name of the living God. You need to put that away and say, I want to serve the Lord faithfully. And you will see the victory of God. Many idols today, probably we don't have idols that are visible. But what are our idols? Our material, our wealth has become an idol to us that is hindering us not to serve God faithfully. I remember people like Abraham. When God told Abraham, I need your son, he did not begin with God. But today when God tells you, I just need your devotion. I need you to seek me. I need you to come and pray. You cannot even commit yourself to that. You still want to bargain with God. You know God, I'm tired. You know God, kuna ivi, kuna vile. But Abraham served the Lord faithfully. And God never ashamed him. The Bible is calling us today to throw away the idols of our forefathers. I've said in this 21st century, these idols can be our wealth. These idols can be our, our desires, our fleshly desires that is hindering us not to serve God faithfully. Unajua tu ya kwamba natumikia mungu. Mimi ni mzao wa kanisa. Lakini unatoka hapa, unenda mpaka siyo kimao mali ujulikane ukakunyo huko. I was being given a story by one of my, uh, uh, one of our son in the family yesterday. And he told me there is a man who came all the way from Kitengela and na Nakuru. Simply because an asiumu kosi julikani na nikiongozi wakanisa. The time that he, uh, he was just getting out of the club, 
akiwa mlevi kabisa akakutana na mchungaji alitoka all the way kitengela ameenda wapi nakuru and we are saying we are serving the lord i'm not speaking about anybody but this is the word that god has given me eh hey, see you more if you want to be blessed we must shift can you tell your neighbor we must shift our service must change we must serve god faithfully with all our hearts with all our soul with all our strength and when we do that we will see the victory of god in our lives we will see things change even where we are and the name of god will be glorified so if you have an idol that you are saying god this is the idol that is making me not to serve you faithfully even as i continue with the word you can start telling the lord please help me to throw away this idol that i may be able to serve you faithfully for the honor and glory of your holy name and therefore apart from uh, we have said that we can break limits not only by serving god according to his standards but number two, we can break limit by serving god ama when our services they accredit god's sustenance when our services or when we appreciate god's sustenance the way god has helped us the way god has sustained us the way god has been there for us you know you can be in the service of the lord na unaozoea kumtumikia mwenyezi mungu unadhani ni kawaida and that is why today you will find uh, pastors that are preaching the gospel but they are still immoral and they are still in the service that is what they are saying you will find choir members who are singing in the altar they are committing their two or three days in the week to come and practice but they are still in immorality when you listen to their talk is not godly you will find members who come to church they serve god through their giving they serve god by coming to to fellowship with other believers but they still know the life they live outside is not an upright life but they are saying we are still serving i want to tell a person here today no one is perfect before god but we must have a desire to live a blameless life praise the name of the lord we must have a desire to say god i don't want just to serve you when things are okay but i also want to serve you when things are difficult when i'm tempted as a young person when i'm facing temptations outside god i still want to serve you and this is only possible if you can accredit god for sustaining you up to where you are when you read from verse 16 from verse 16 uh, to 18 the bible says that then the people answered far be it from us to forsake the lord to serve other gods it was the lord that is the word it was the lord our god himself who brought us uh, and our forefathers and, and our fathers up out of egypt from that land of slavery and perform those great signs before our eyes he protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we travel and the lord drove out before us all the nation including the amorites who lived in the land we too will serve the lord because he is, a, he is our god the word is it was our god is there a person today who can stand and say it is god who has brought me this far it is god who has helped my children to stand for him it is god who has given me this job it is god who has given me this family it is god who has given me the gift that i have it is god who has given me the money that i have and therefore with whatever he has given me with whatever he has entrusted to me i am going to appreciate i am going to accredit him or give credit to him because it is not because i deserve but it is by the mercies of god don't think that we are alive corona could have swept us but god kept us alive for a reason he kept us alive so that when we get through the season of covid and we come out healthy 
we can serve the Lord. It is God. Can you look back into your life and say it is God? It is God who has helped me. And if it is God who has helped you, then if you can appreciate, if you can accredit God for sustaining you, then you will serve with humility. Out of the bigger kifua, useme mimi ni CEO kwa sababu nimesoma. We have many people who are learning, they don't have job. We have many people who are married, they don't have children. We have many young people who are beautiful, they don't have husbands. Many young men who are qualified to be husbands, they don't have wives. But God has given you. It is God. If you can recall that, then you will serve him with humility. And the Bible says uh, in James, James chapter 4 verse 6 to 8, God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. When you appreciate God sustaining you, then you will serve him with humility. First Peter chapter 5 verse 6, the Bible says, Humble yourself, therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that at proper time he may exalt you. We will treat people with respect. I was telling that son of ours, I call him our son because my husband is the one who educated him up to university. And so yesterday he visited us and I was telling him, please, our son, wherever you will go, treat people with care. Respect people because you don't know where you will meet them. Don't just mind about yourself. Don't think about your own, your, your interest alone. And God will bless you. And so I want to call us today to appreciate God, to accredit God for sustaining us. Things might not be 100% the way you desired, but there is a God in heaven. If you can say it is God, it is you that has made me to come this far, then that God can still take over and lead you to higher places because he's a faithful God. And these people, they say that because you have said you will serve, the Lord, you will serve God, then even us, we will serve God. And the last thing I want to say, that for our service to be able to break limits, the last thing, uh, we must allow God to empower us spiritually. When we have served according to his standard, when we have appreciated him for sustaining us, then for the journey ahead, we need the same God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we should allow God to empower us spiritually. Because when you read in the book of Corinthians uh, chapter 12, it speaks about the gift of the Holy Spirit. When you, you read up, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, the Bible says, For we are God workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. There is a work that you were created to do. There is a service that is waiting for you. And for you to be able to fulfill that service or that purpose, you need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. In leadership, there are times that people, they tore you to pieces. There are times that people discourage you and you feel like living. You feel like, no, I cannot continue serving the Lord. You can serve in a fellowship team. Because you want to revive the prayer groups. And you are there leading people. But they can hurt broke you. And that, that is why I'm saying. That in the journey ahead. Because God has sustained you in the past. The journey ahead. You need God to empower you with his spirit. And that is why verse, um, verse 19. Joshua told them. Joshua said to the people. You are not able to serve the Lord. He is holy. God. He is a jealousy God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you 
and make an end of you after he has been good to you. Joshua did not imply that our God cannot forgive. But he wanted the children of Israel to know what they are committing themselves to. If they have said we will serve God, he wanted them to know that it is not by their power that they are able to serve God. Because this God is holy. This God is a jealousy God. And he needs you to serve him according to his standards. And we know that we are all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, he's telling them that you cannot serve God by your own strength. Are you getting what I'm saying? This God forgives, but he, is, he also punishes. He's a merciful God, but when we rebel, then he will reveal his wrath to us. And so he's warning them for the journey ahead, you need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Are you here and you are a young person and you are saying, I am in school, I am in campus, and deep within me I desire to serve the Lord. In the midst of temptations, in the midst of push of, of flesh, I want to tell you that if you allow God to empower you spiritually, you will make it in the journey. Because it is not by your own strength, but by the power of God. Are you here and your husband, you are saying, I have not been serving God faithfully in my family. You can tell the Lord today, please God, empower me spiritually so that I may be able to wear those shoes of a priest and serve you through my family faithfully. Sometimes I pray and I tell God, please help me to be a good wife. Because we are all human. Sometimes you can be hearted. Sometimes you can be kidole. But I go into my closet and I tell God, help me to be a good wife. Help my husband to be a good husband. Help me to be a good mother. Help me to be a good minister. Because I know it is by the spirit of God that we can able to rise and fulfill that which God desires from us. Am I speaking to someone? You can just start praying and tell God, please. God empower me spiritually. When God empower us spiritually, we will be willing to count the cost. Romans 12 says, offer your body as a living sacrifice to the Lord. When you are empowered by the Spirit of God, you will offer your body as a living sacrifice to God. When you are empowered by the Holy Spirit, you will be able to sacrifice your resources, your money, your wealth for the service of the Lord. While I was in Siokimau, during the COVID, God sent a servant of God. I used to be in the church alone because I was the church admin. And so there are many hours I was in the church. I used to get in and start take the piano because I know how to play kidogo and start worshiping the Lord. And the man could come and kneel down, a very wealthy servant of God, and pray. But God used him to sacrifice his wealth to sustain me. During COVID, God put him to be a blessing to me, and I became a blessing to other people. In AIC Siokimau, I've seen people, mutu anasema, mimi ni kona prado, Na niko na kagari kengine kadogo na mchungaji wangu anatembea na miguu. I've seen people purchasing cars for pastors. One person. People who have allowed to be empowered by the spirit of God, they can sacrifice anything for God. We know that we have a, 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 a project on Sunday to give toward our senior pastor. Kitambo I used to think like having a car is just a luxury until I became a minister. And I realized you are needed here, you are needed here, you are needed here. The, the gospel is free, but the means to take it is expensive. And so I want to encourage us. On Sunday, God is giving us an opportunity to serve him faithfully through our pastors. I know in the, in the groups, your mama, 
There was an announcement that we give 200. But I want to challenge us women. When you tap to the, the life of our pastor, one day you will sit and you will tell God, remember I gave a thousand. Remember I gave 10,000 for your servant to buy a car. In this home, I claim cars. And they will come. So let's raise our standard. We should not just give 200. But go as a family. Joshua said, me and my household, we will serve the Lord. It is my prayer that we will go down and sit as families. We will go down and sit as individuals. And say on Sunday, we want to come and tap to the life of our pastor. I remember one day there was a, a servant of God who was studying in Scott. And every time she used to, my mom, then she was a business lady. And I remember seeing this pastor passing by and telling my mom, I'll go to Samson. That's my middle name if you never knew. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm My mom could strain herself and party a killer likuwa nacho. Lakini nasema, whatever a man saw, he shall reap. When I went to campus, I have never struggled for school fees. And I have never gone home one day and tell my mom I need school fees. But God supplied. But God provided. And therefore sometimes I recall that my mom touched the life of his servants. And then God made a way for me. It was a walkover. Kuna baraka zingine lazima tunganganie. I am praying that that day nitakuwa nimepata mshahara so that I can come and tap to the life of our bishop, to the life of our reverend here in this church. Because I know next it is me. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> I know next it is me. And so whatever a man sows, he shall reap. And so it is my prayer today as we respond to the word of God. I want to say, as I conclude because of time, that uh, choosing to serve God can be a key of breaking limits in our life when, we, uh, when our services align with the standards of God. And number two, when our services are able to appreciate, or when we are able to appreciate or accredit God's sustenance. And number three, when we can allow the Spirit of God to empower us. But do you know something? There are people who desire to serve the Lord, but they don't know Him. They don't have a relationship with Him. No matter how long you will serve, your service will end here. And so the marking point is, do you know this God? We need to know Him, to love Him, so that we can serve Him faithfully. So if you are in this service and you have never given your life to Christ, you say, God, I want to serve you. You are a young person. You are saying, one day I will wish to be like Pastor Rhoda. One day I would like to, to be like Reverend Jeremiah. And you are saying, God, I am here, but I don't know where to start. You can start by saying, God, I give my life to you. You are a husband. You have not been serving your family faithfully uh, because service to humanity is service to God. You can tell God today, I want to give my life to you. This week, a person, just allow me to say if you are here, because it will be of encouragement to a person, told me that, Pastor, I love serving God, but I have a problem. I am struggling with drinking. And then I asked him, are you saved? He told me, no, I think I'm backslidden. And therefore, he told me again, kwe tu nyumbani, kuna madhabawi ya ulevi. Just, uh, just allow, allow, allow him. Let us just hear and finish. Akasema kwetu nyumbani kuna madhabau ya ulevi. And I told him that when you give your life to God, when you, you serve God from a point of understanding, from a point of having a relationship with him, God will set you free. Whatever bondage you are in, whatever limi limitation you are facing, that is hindering you not to serve the Lord. When you say, God, I surrender. I allow you to empower me spiritually. I allow you to receive me as a son and a daughter in your kingdom. Then you'll be able to serve God faithfully. Just want us to bow our head before the Lord. And just respond to the word of God. 
the way you have understood it this morning. Maybe you are saying, God, I've been serving you, but not faithfully. You can ask God to forgive you. Just tell him to forgive you because he is, he is a, a, a merciful God and he will forgive you. If you are saying, God, nimekuwa na jipiga kifua. Nimedhani uduma yangu ni kwa sababu ya nguvu zangu. Lakini I've realized it is only by your mercy. You can say, God, thank you. Many times we have lived a life that is not worthy. But God has been merciful to us. God could have exposed your sin. But God just gave you another chance. So that you can be able to appreciate him. Even as you journey in the life. And at this point I just want to ask. Is there any person who is saying I want to serve the Lord. I desire to serve him faithfully. But I've never given my life to him. And you are saying, God, I am here. I want to give my life to you today. That I may begin afresh. That I may be able to serve you according to your standard. Is there a person who is saying, I want to give my life to you? In that mood of prayer, just raise your hand wherever you are. I will see it and I will pray with you. Thank you for those hands. May God bless you. God has seen that. I want just you to pray and tell God, today I give my life to you. Today I surrender my life to you. Be the Lord and the Savior so that I can, you can help me to serve you according to your standards. You can help me, God, to appreciate you for the fact that you have brought me. Just want to ask again, is there a person who has been serving the Lord, but he want to confess today and ask God to forgive you because you feel like you have not been serving faithfully. Kuna watu nasema bwana atusamee. Atuja kutumikia kwa uaminifu. Thank you for those hands. You are not lifting to me. You are lifting to God. God is seeing. Ask God to forgive you. And ask God to give you the zeal. To push through by his grace. Thank you. You can put your hands down. Mighty God and everlasting father. We want to thank you for your word that has come us to, to us today. Lord, you intended to speak this way to your people. And thank you, Lord, for choosing to use me. Father, I pray for those two people who have lifted their hands. They have said, Lord, they want to give their lives to you. Lord, let this be a day that they will always remember that they gave their lives to you. Lord, I pray that you may fill them with your spirit now. The Lord, they will feel refreshed. They will feel uplifted. They will feel forgiven. They will feel justified in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Lord, I want to thank you for every person who has raised a hand or his hand to repent. Because many times we fall short of your glory. Many times we serve with pride and we forget it is by your grace. Lord, we repent before you forgive us. Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, even as we continue to journey in this life, that you will help us always to allow your spirit to empower us. That we may serve you in humility. And that we may serve humanity. Because service to humanity it is service to God. Thank you, Lord, for using me. May you take all the glory. And it is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we appreciate God? May God bless you.